Hi everybody and welcome back to Bridezilla. What do you think should be the proper reaction to a bridesmaid throwing a tantrum because she was not the maid of honor? Well in this video we're gonna see what OP did. But before we begin, don't forget about Lost Genre AITA Daily, a channel dedicated exclusively to Am I the A-hole? Now strap on because this video is gonna be long, it's a three part story. So now, let's get started. This one's from user Swearing Bridesmaid. So, for background, my sister Laura, 28 female, and I, 26 female, were raised by our mom without a dad for the first five-ish years of my life. It was just the three of us until my mom met my stepdad. They got married and had our little sister, Carrie, 21 female, not long after. My stepdad is an awesome guy. Before he came along, Laura, Mom and I lived in a tiny apartment with nothing much but second-hand items and each other. But we were happy because we had a roof over our head and food on the table. My stepdad has an excellent job. So once they married and had Carrie, we moved into a nice big house, a mansion compared to our apartment, and started getting nice gifts at Christmas time and birthdays. This is what Carrie grew up with. And whereas we grew up with a lot of it too, I don't think it affected us as bad because we remember what it's like to be frugal and to not have much. My mom, to this day, is still very frugal and we love to go thrifting or making our own items like we used to anyways. So Laura and I are very separate from Carrie in that regard. Carrie has always been spoiled. But not in a throw a tantrum and ask daddy for a new car, but she'll ask for a $500 birthday cake and get it. Buy name brand things only and if she can't have something for whatever reason, she'll pout for about 3 days and be moody. So surprise surprise, she still lives with mom and dad and doesn't have a job on her own and they seem to be fine with it but whatever. Anyways. Laura's boyfriend of 6 years proposed last year and we were all thrilled. He's a great guy and we all love him. Back when she got engaged, she gave me, her friend Charlotte and Carrie a box of beautiful earrings that said, will you be a bridesmaid? And mine said, maid of honor. We were all giddy and started coming up with ideas and discussing colors and cakes and all that fun stuff, but they decided to wait a year to save and to figure out what they wanted. Well, four months ago, Laura announced she was pregnant and as a family, we were all excited. All except Carrie, who remained quiet and didn't say much about it. Laura then explained that her and Alan decided they want to have the wedding in two months, with about 30 to 40 people so that they can really celebrate before the baby. Stepdad offered them $10,000 so they could have their dream wedding but due to the circumstances they asked if they could use most of that money on a house they were looking at instead and he agreed. So Charlotte, Laura, Mom and I have been frantically planning things and it's been a lot of fun. Except for the fact that Carrie hasn't said much about it from the start and whenever we start wedding planning she either goes on her phone or will not pay much attention. Finally, Laura had a talk and asked her for more input and to participate more, and Carrie agreed. When we were on our way to the dollar store to pick up some wedding decorations, Carrie scoffed and said, dollar store decorations, that's so tacky. But we ignored her and did our thing. When we asked if she would help us make handmade invitations, she complained again and said that it'll look like a bunch of preschoolers made it and just stomped away. Finally, just recently, we were all dress shopping and Laura told us we can pick whatever dress we want as long as it's blue because she wants it to be simple and we would be paying for it ourselves. So mom, Charlotte and I went into H&M and found beautiful blue summer maxi dresses. Different styles, mom had lace, mom had a floral cotton and Laura thought they were perfect. Except Carrie, of course, and she wanted to buy this $2,000 bridesmaid designer gown she found online. My mom told her that was ridiculous. Laura's gown didn't even cost that much. So Carrie, of course, pouted and whined, so mom gave in and we all went to this fancy bridal shop. Carrie right away found a pink blush gown that she had to wear, but it was $1,000. Mom said a firm no 
Plus, it's not even blue like the other bridesmaids. My sister then said blue was the stupidest color for a bridesmaid dress because we don't even live near the ocean. Huh? Anyways, we all left and she had her little pout and mom lectured her and told her this is a frugal wedding. It's in our backyard, barbecue with only 30-40 people and so she doesn't need a $2,000 designer dress of any kind. Fast forward to a few days later and Carrie says she found the dress to wear that she already had in her closet, plus it was blue. So we thought, terrific! But when we get over to mom and dad's, Carrie strutted out in her old prom dress from high school, which is basically a puffy ball gown bedazzled with jewels. And as anyone does after high school, she grew out of it so her breasts were spilling out and it overall was not flattering. On top of that, she was wearing a tiara full of sparkling jewels that she claimed she bought just for the wedding. Mom and Laura were silent and finally I felt I had enough so I snapped and told her she couldn't possibly be serious. Wearing a dress fancier than the bride is one thing, having your breasts spill out is another, but also wearing a crown on top of that? Who does she think she is? Carrie crossed her arms and said, I'm the maid of honor of course, I'm going to wear a crown. This is when we all get silent, until Laura speaks up and says, Maid of honor? I made Amy maid of honor. You and Charlotte are the bridesmaids. Well, this triggered Carrie and she began screeching, What do you mean I'm not maid of honor? You told me I was. Laura then said, When? And Carrie replied, When you gave us those presents, I got earrings because I'm maid of honor. Now, I don't know if for this past year, Carrie really truly thought she was maid of honor and got the title bridesmaid mixed up, or if she was in denial or just simply didn't pay any attention to detail. Because I've been maid of honor this entire time and she hasn't said anything about it until then. But this caused her to have the worst meltdown I think I have ever witnessed in my life. I truly thought people only acted like this in movies or storybooks. Whenever a redditor would post about a bridezilla or wedding meltdown, I always thought this must be exaggerated. But this has been the worst meltdown ever in our family. Carrie began screaming, crying, she ripped off her crown and stomped around until dad came down to see what was all the fuzz about. Through her blubbering, she told Lara her wedding was all wrong. She said she should be using that 10k for a nice wedding instead of that ugly brick house her and Alan wanted because that's what the money was meant for. She also said it was the stupidest idea ever that my sister would want to get married while pregnant because you look like a fat swan in your wedding dress. And again, she rambled onto something about how blue is a dumb color because we don't live near the ocean. I think at this point she's just pulling stuff out of her butt. Dad tried to calm her down and she finally screams that if she can't be maid of honor then no one can and she won't go to the wedding. At this point Laura is a mess and is crying her heart out and I'm ready to smack that little witch so hard that the crown stays off her head permanently. But before I can say anything Laura says fine, you can be maid of honor, you win. And just like that. Carrie stopped crying and she gave a small smile before going up to her room. Mom and dad start arguing, dad saying there's nothing you can do to control a 20 year old's behavior and Laura had went to the next room to call Alan about potentially cancelling the wedding. I'm so angry that I end up storming into Carrie's room to see that she's on her laptop ordering that stupid pink 2k dress. I was so dumbfounded at the nerve of her that I couldn't even face her. I left and didn't say a word. Downstairs, Laura is crying to her fiance and the parents are yelling all the while Carrie is happily in her room buying stupid crap because she got her way. I don't think I've ever been this angry. I wish Laura had more backbone. I would have told Carrie to not bother coming if she was going to act like that. I don't even know what to do now. I'm so hurt that Laura gave the title to her just like that because she screamed for it. Edit to add, we live on a farm so we have approximately 6 acres of open space where we are holding the wedding. The cooks who are preparing the hot dogs and hamburgers will be wearing masks. The guests are all required to wear masks and we have hand sanitizer bottles at every table. Sorry I had forgotten to include that. 
Personally, I wouldn't want to risk it too much, but I'll be wearing a mask and hand sanitizing constantly so I don't have to miss my sister's wedding and pray that everything turns out fine. We also have a little tap on the side of our house we use as a sink all the time. That's available to guests. I forget that a lot of people right now probably aren't taking any precautions at all, so I wanted to mention we are, if at least a little. Wow, well, that's part one of this whole saga. What do you guys think about Carrie so far? She sounds like so much fun. You just want to hang out with her, don't you? All right, now let's continue with part number two. When I made that post, it was already three days past the Carrie meltdown. So I gave it a lot of time and thought and soaked in everyone's piece of advice on here. Alan, Laura's fiance, had actually called me early this morning and asked if I'd be able to go over to see Laura because he's fed up with Carrie's BS and we need to act fast. I was relieved to hear I wasn't the only one fed up besides those on Reddit, so I went over straight away. Laura was on the couch in her PJs, hair unwashed and it looked like she had been crying the last few days. The image absolutely broke my heart and immediately she apologized to me and said she didn't know what to do now. Alan said he thought the three of us should all sit down with her and have an intervention, but Laura shut that down right away and said she doesn't think she could handle any more yelling. I agreed that being yelled at is the last thing that Laura needs and it should just be me and Alan, but Laura was nervous about that too. She didn't want Carrie to feel like she was being bombarded. So finally, after a few back and forths, Laura decided that she just wanted me alone to talk to Carrie without mom and dad and her. And so together, we made a list of things that I needed to address with her so that way things don't steer off topic. Such as how it's unacceptable to yell at a pregnant woman, no matter the circumstances. How disrespectful she was to criticize anything with the wedding and the name calling and of course the most important part about her crying in order to be maid of honor. I also decided to bring up to Laura the fact that Charlotte and I, the other bridesmaid, were planning to have a fun bachelorette slumber party in a few days to help Laura celebrate. Laura's face lit up and she seemed excited. I told her it was supposed to be a surprise and Carrie was supposed to come, but given the circumstances and the fact that it's at my flat, I don't want her there anymore and I wanted to see if Laura was fine with that. She said she was and that she'd much rather have her other friend over instead of Carrie. I told her that was completely fine and after some more talking, I made my way to mom and dad's to see Carrie. As soon as I walked in, mom asked me what I was doing there and I told her I needed to speak to Carrie. Mom looked around and in a hushed robe told me it's best I leave because the last three days, after things were resolved, Carrie has been perfectly happy and no one in this family needs any more drama. I told mom I was sorry, but things in fact were not resolved. They were far from resolved. That's when Carrie walked into the kitchen and asked what was I doing there. Mom tried to brush it off and say, nothing, Amy was just coming to get something but she's on her way out. But I told her, no, actually, that's a lie. I'm here to talk to you about what happened the other day alone. Carrie didn't seem pleased and Mom's face was as red as a tomato, but Carrie and I proceeded to go into her bedroom to talk. I firstly told her how completely unacceptable it was for her to raise her voice and scream at a pregnant woman because of how harmful it was for the baby. Immediately, Carrie scoffed and said, No it isn't. Don't make up lies to make me feel guilty. I told her what lies. And she said, The baby isn't going to be affected just because I raised my voice. It doesn't even know what's going on and you're just making stuff up. What the? Ugh, this girl, I swear. I decided it's no use arguing with stupid, so I told her pregnant or not, this was Laura's wedding, not hers, and all of the name calling she did and harsh criticism of the decorations was completely childish and unacceptable. I then brought up the fact how her throwing that tantrum to get her way was the most childish thing I've ever seen in my life and that if things were reversed and I made Laura take away Carrie's maid of honor job, she, Carrie, would have lost her mind. So how was it in any ways alright for her to do it to me? In response to that, she told me I'm acting so pathetic and that I reek of jealousy. She then said, there's no real problem here, you're just jealous Laura decided she wanted me after all. I told her this was false, she wanted me. 
otherwise she wouldn't have asked, but agreed to make Harry maid of honor to stop the fighting. Carrie then very smugly said there was nothing I could do about it now, so I'd better get over it. That's when I told her she was no longer welcome to the sleepover we had planned and that Laura also did not want her to come. Until Carrie decides to apologize to me, Laura and our parents for her outrageous behavior, she was no longer welcome in my and my fiancé's home. Suddenly, mom burst through the door, I'm assuming she was listening in, and went completely ape. She told me I had no right to ban Carrie from the sleepover and from my house and that the only reason I was doing it was to get back at her. She told me I was stirring up unnecessary drama and that at least Carrie didn't mean to hurt feelings the other day, whereas right now I'm doing it on purpose. This is when Carrie begins to cry and moan about how I'm always bullying her and I'm not being fair. My mom then goes over to Carrie and starts rubbing her back and says, I know honey, she's being very rude to you right now. You didn't start anything. Gag. That's when I noticed stepdad standing at the door and I said to him, Do you not see all this? Did she at least tell you she bought that pink $2,000 dress? Dad looked awkwardly between my mom's sister and me before saying, I think everyone is stressed out and no one means what they say. Sisters fight and I know by the end of the wedding you'll all be best friends again. At this point I really, really had enough. I told everyone I was leaving and mom got up and said the discussion wasn't over. I told her actually it was over and unless Carrie apologizes to me and Laura I will not be speaking to her. On my way out I heard Carrie say there was nothing she needs to apologize about but I kept walking. To say that I was hurt and angry is an understatement and with how my head was pounding I just wanted some Advil and juice so I went to the nearest drugstore. Now this part might have been where I crossed over the line, I'm honestly not sure. But in my last post I didn't mention, because I didn't find it relevant, that Carrie has a boyfriend she's been going out with for approximately 6 months. His name is Noah, he's 27, he's hardcore Christian and overall a really cool guy. I've met him at the city's university about two years ago and we had a lot of the same courses together and became pals. He and Carrie have quite a bit in common, they both love animals, he fosters animals all the time and Carrie at that point was debating on studying to be a vet. So at the beginning of January Noah moved back to our part of the city where he got a job as a pharmacist and that's when he and Carrie started going out, which we were all cool with because he really is a great person. Because of his Christian values, he's very excited to get married and have kids ASAP. He said multiple times he hopes to be engaged by the end of this year. Carrie is also his first relationship, which might be another reason why he's so anxious for the commitment. Anyways, I got some Advil and juice and was surprised to see Noah because I didn't know he worked at this particular pharmacy. So he waved me over and saw the Advil and asked if I was sick. I told him no, just a headache from the wedding stress. He said, oh, Carrie never mentioned any wedding stress, she said things were terrific. This surprised me but mostly ticked me off, so I asked him if that means she never told him about the situation a few days before. He had no clue, so I made it brief and told him the highlights of her name callings, screaming and choosing her own dress against my sister's wishes and how now she's the new maid of honor. This surprised Noah and he said stuff like, are you sure? I know Carrie, she always hates yelling, she didn't actually make that big of a scene did she? I told him yes, it was all very unfortunately true. Then I told him that if she talks to him to please recommend her some sort of therapist, he knows quite a few and I told him perhaps she might even need medicine for bipolar disorder for all I know. I told her I am now out of her life unless she apologized and if I were him I would think very carefully before making a commitment to her anytime soon. He stood there and didn't respond, so I left and when I went home Alan and my fiance were playing video games and they asked what happened so I told them everything. Alan and fiance think I was in the right for everything including warning Noah. Later on that evening I got countless texts from Carrie and my mother who were furious that I mentioned anything to Noah just to start crap on purpose. 
I did not respond to any of the messages and instead I blocked both of their numbers for the time being. As for Noah, Carrie has him wrapped around her little finger completely, so I honestly don't see him doing anything drastic. He sees how she is when she's pouty and how she is when she's spoiled, but I think all of that goes over his head completely. But still, I felt I needed to say something. I wish I could say I feel better and like a new woman, but I don't. I feel hurt and betrayed. It feels like my throat and my chest are clogged and I honestly don't know if it'll ever clear. At the end of the day, Laura called me and said she really wants me as her maid of honor, but in order to keep the peace, she is choosing Carrie. For now, I will swallow my pride and my pain and support my favorite sister in anything she decides, and I'm going to love my new niece or nephew to bits. Whoa, drama, drama, drama. It gets thicker. Well, this was part two. So now, let's move on to the final part of this trilogy. So, it was about two weeks, I think. It's all been a weird blur since I had that talk with Carrie. And I had since then blocked my mom, dad, and Carrie on everything, just hoping things may settle on their own. Well, it didn't exactly settle, but here's what happened. About two weeks after everything, my fiancé and I were just chilling late one evening watching TV. It was about 2 a.m. when fiancé gets a phone call from Carrie. He had never blocked her number or mom's, so at first we just left it, not wanting to deal with whatever Carrie was wanting to talk about at 2 a.m. But then right after we ignored the first call, she called a second time and left a voice message telling my fiancé to pick up the phone ASAP because there's an emergency. Right away, he called back and all we could understand from Carrie was something was going on with mom and she didn't know what to do. We hurried over there and was greeted by Carrie who told us mom was acting hysterical and she didn't know what to do. When I asked where stepdad was, she said they had gotten into a huge row a few days prior and he was now staying at a hotel somewhere. She led us over to mom's room and on the way there I could see the family photos that were hung up in the hallway were either laying down on the floor or smashed. When we entered the bedroom however, mom was calm watching a TV show. She looked over to me and said something along the lines of, well, if it isn't my only daughter, her speech was incredibly slurred, so it was hard to hear and Carrie told me not to pay any mind to what she was saying because the last hour she's been out of it and saying off things. I thought maybe mom was going to start shouting or something, but instead she continued to watch TV. I asked Carrie if mom was drunk and she said she wasn't sure, although she knew she had some wine earlier. Apparently, mom had been saying weird stuff that just made no sense at all, then started screaming and shouting about broken families being stuck in the picture frames, so that's why there was that mess in the hall. As I was questioning Carrie, my fiancé decided to call the emergency line to get mom an ambulance. He asked Carrie if mom was on any medication, and apparently she was on something for anxiety and depression, which I had no idea. I knew mom had anxiety issues, but I never knew much else. Once fiancé got off the phone with emergency line, Carrie went and grabbed us the bottles of mom's medications to bring to the doctors while fiancé tried to get a hold of my stepdad. I asked Carrie if she contacted our other sister and she said no because she didn't want to cause any unnecessary stress for her or for the baby. She then went on to admit that she knew I was right the entire time when I told her that stress could affect a pregnancy but just didn't want to admit it before. I decided now wasn't the time to argue and just kept my mouth shut. Eventually, the paramedics came and just as they did, mom started screaming in hysterics again, screaming and yelling stuff that I don't even quite remember because it was garbled and didn't make sense. Something about her needing to stay to feed the baby. We all went to the hospital and eventually fiancé finally got a hold of stepdad and he arrived much later. But the doctor figured with the amounts of stress, and with her and dad's constant fighting, plus the mixture of alcohol and her medication, turns out she had drank quite a bit that night. It was like she just sort of snapped and she became somewhat confused and disoriented. He also figures mom hasn't been taking her medication properly. Physically, mom was perfectly fine, but they are keeping her in for a few days just to keep an eye on her. Due to the bug, I haven't been able to visit her or see her until she gets released. 
but dad was able to go in and verify a few things. But as far as I know, he's not really allowed to stay with her either and was able to see her that night she was admitted. As for the actual wedding stuff, while Carrie and I were driving back home, she had told me that Laura texted her a few days before and told her that I was still going to be maid of honor. The decision was final and she would not be answering her or our parents' phone calls or texts about the matter. Hearing this had led to more fighting between mom, dad and Carrie and shouting and that's when things went mostly downhill. Neither Carrie or my parents have spoken to Laura in a few days since. I was completely taken aback, especially since Laura never told me this herself. I tried getting more information but Carrie was pretty much silent the entire way back home. She did have a little speech prepared about how she might no longer even consider me her sister again, how betrayed she was by everything and I just let her talk and didn't have much to say. I was too tired to fight or do anything and she had nothing else to say about the wedding or mom's breakdown and I haven't spoken to her since. Currently, I am looking for family therapy for the very near future. I'm not sure what's available since the bug. But I plan on getting in touch with mom's doctor to see if he has any suggestions. I had told Alan what happened and I'm hoping he will be able to tell Laura without her stressing out too much. I suggested he keep it vague and to tell her mom was completely fine. And that's it. What a roller coaster of a story. First we have some... 20 year old toddler making a tantrum, then we have this big fight between mom and the toddler and the other sister, and now we have mom's breakdown. Whoa, it's a lot to deal with for this family. Hopefully they're able to go to family therapy and that 20 year old toddler turns into an adult. But that's just my wishful thinking. What do you guys think? Alright, so we've reached the end of this very long video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and click like, share it to your friends, and of course don't forget to subscribe. Also, go check out my other channel where I have shorter videos and playlists for the day, Lost Genre IATA Daily, where you'll get your daily dose of Am I the A-hole? And finally, don't forget to go over to the Lost Genre subreddit to share your stories if you feel comfortable, or cross-post stories from other subs for me to feature in videos. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.